What's going on friends? Today I want to show you how I made that effect in After Effects and what gear I used. So if you haven't seen the original video, I was inspired by this TikTok by Shy Guy. He does a fantastic job with this effect and I thought I could mimic something like that. And I'm going to provide links for all the gear I used as well. It's going to be down in the description. So I want to show you for this effect what gear I used and I'm going to put it right here. I used the Sony FX3 as my main camera. I use the Aperture 300D2 for the light. I use this fog machine that I got at like the Halloween store, I think. And as for the slider that I used, I used the iFootage Shark Nano slider. Now, none of these companies sponsored me, but I will have like affiliate links down below, so you can just go ahead and check them out. So the first step is after I know where I wanna put my camera with the slider, I set the A and B points, which is pretty much like setting the first position of the camera, followed by the end position, and then the slider just takes it in between those two points. So I use the infinite loop setting on the slider, and it will just continue to go back and forth from those two points until the battery dies. So as the camera is still sliding back and forth, uh, I go ahead and set up my light and my haze. So the reason why I add haze is just to give the kitchen more of like a volumetric feel. Once the light shines in, it'll really show like that beam of light going through the whole kitchen. As for my lighting setup, I just set one 300D aperture outside, pointing inside my kitchen, kind of like an angle. I would say towards like those double ovens. And then I used a color temperature orange gel just to give it like a sun look. As the camera is still recording, this is like 10 minutes of footage. I don't recommend you starting. I just don't know why I wanted to challenge myself. I continue to move to like different spots in the kitchen and I kind of let the camera and the slider travel by itself. So like I would stand in one position, I would let the camera travel A to B fully until it goes back. And then once it starts heading back, I would like quickly change to another spot in the kitchen. That way when the camera comes back around, I'll be in a totally different spot. And I pretty much just kept moving to different areas until I was satisfied with how many shots I got. So after I bring my video into my After Effects composition, I try to scrub through it and try to see like the A and B starting points that I did and I break them up by layers. So as you can see, this is point A of my slider and then it goes all the way to point B, which is right here. And then it just starts resetting back to point A. And then it does this for an infinite loop. So what I try to do is I try to find point A and I can tell point A is like gonna be this right here where I can barely see like this stove top right here. And for every layer, I want to try to match the beginning shot with that stove top. So let's see another example. So for the second shot, I'm like in a different spot in this kitchen. And I want to try to line up point A with the first original clip. So I can barely see the oven like that. I just want to split that clip and then bring it to the front. It's always helpful to like keep everything organized and name your layers because layers can add up fast and it can get really hectic. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna name the bottom layer one. And now what I'm gonna do to see if the shot matches is I'm gonna click the letter T on the second clip that we put above clip number one. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lower the opacity to around 50 and then just try to see where we can line up the first shot. So once you line up that first clip right here with the second one, you can sort of see both layers of the footage that you got. And you can tell if everything is lined up when there's no mismatched or offset kind of lines. And everything looks pretty good for the second shot here. With the second shot being good, I'm gonna go ahead and bring back my opacity up to 100%. And then we can start rotoscoping. So since the Shark Nano slider is moving between those two points every time on loop, it's gonna be the precise same movement every time, which is what we need. So we don't have to pretty much move the footage around. So I'm gonna go back into our second layer, which is the one above number one. And I'm just gonna go ahead and double click it. And what I'm gonna do after I select this roto brush tool up here is I'm just gonna select me just chilling on the table. And Rotor Brush 3.0 is gonna try its best using AI to pretty much keep everything within those lines that you want selected. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna select myself and after that, I'm gonna use the page up and page down keys to move a frame forward and backward. So the page up key would be one frame back. And Rotor Brush 3.0 is gonna try its best to stay within those lines. And we can clean it up after we're finished.
So to me, that looks pretty good. I'm gonna set that as the first starting point for our rotor brush right here. And then I'm gonna go forward a couple of frames. And it's okay if your rotoscope is interacting with anything in the foreground, because we're gonna just go ahead and blend it afterwards. So to pretty much take out anything that you don't want, I'm gonna hit the Alt key on the keyboard and your pointer is gonna turn red right here. So I'm just gonna deselect everything that I don't want. Now that I'm confident in what I want Rotor Brush to do and to select, I'm gonna go ahead and click the space bar. And what that does, it's like, it's gonna continue to roto frame by frame. And whenever the Rotor Brush finishes the sequence, you're gonna to wanna to watch and see if there's any mistakes. So I can tell right here in this little corner that it starts to kind of not know what to keep in the lines. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fix that. So it starts right here and I'm gonna go ahead and just use my green paintbrush to fill that in and then see if it does it in the next frame. And that should be good. Alrighty, and then whenever you're finished, you're just gonna wanna hit this freeze button right here. So what that freeze button does is it just locks in our rotor brush layer. Alrighty, now once your rotor brush is frozen, you can tell because the entire timeline will be purple, we can go back to the composition. So in this composition, you can now see that there's two of me. What? How'd that happen? Boom, 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 boom. So we can just name this layer uh, by selecting it, click enter. We can name it clone one. And after that, you're going to do this for every other layer that you have recorded. Just remember to have them synced up perfectly. So we use kind of like the pillar for reference and we also use like the oven in the beginning. And after you've rotor brushed every clone layer of yourself, we're gonna apply an effect called Refine Soft Matte. So if we go to the effect panel and type in Refine Soft Matte, we're just gonna drag it and drop it only to the clone layer. So we're gonna drop it to clone one, for example. And I'm gonna show you what it does when it's off. So it's on right now. And in order to enable or disable that effect, we're gonna click this little effects box right here. So this is the Roto Brush clone layer that we did earlier. And this is before the refined soft mat. And this is after. So it just kind of, you know, feathers the edges a little bit and makes it look natural. Now that we have our refined soft mat on top of our rotor brush layer, everything's looking pretty smooth. We can go back and look at what our clip looks like. And so far, I like how it looks. You can notice on the edges of this bag right here, there's some chatter going on. And the way I like to get rid of that is pretty much to turn chatter reduction to more detailed. So now you can start layering all your clones and they'll look something like this. Last step is pretty much just syncing your clones with the song or whatever track you have. And by doing that, uh, you can just drag and drop whatever song in After Effects. And then to shorten or lengthen the clip, you can grab whatever clone layer and just move in and out. So it appears here, it doesn't there, appears here. And I use the music to guide my clones and I make them appear off of every beat. After that, you can go ahead and export, file, export, add to render queue, render out your footage, and you should have something like this. So that's what I got for you today. I hope you enjoyed today's video. And again, if anyone is interested in the gear that I use for this effect today, they're gonna to be in the description below so you can learn more about them. So that's all I have for this tutorial today. I wanna to make a color grading one, but that's for next time. So have a great day. I love you. Peace out.